First of all, y'all ain't watch this series. Y'all sit here and complain about y'all want black sooner shows and y'all don't watch them. Roll my theme music. <laughs> All right, all right. Welcome to another episode of Claire Hair. We are doing another um, natural hair chat. All right, y'all. Get real with me. I feel like my gift to the world is to bring laughter, but mostly to bring accountability. Y'all even watch this show. I looked at the numbers for the viewers for the Hulu series and just the general buzz. Y'all was not pressed about hair tales, and they specifically went out of their way to make this series, and y'all didn't watch it. But we're gonna be today we're gonna be talking about the four the last four episodes and then we're gonna talk about my overall review of hair tales so let's start it off and kick it off with ayana presley she is a representative for the u.s representatives um she is professional and i think my issue is the fact that i don't know her name i feel like we need to more and that's you know of course it's ignorance on my side but i feel like I feel like we have a tendency to promote certain celebrities more than we promote excellence, especially black excellence. So when she was sworn in, I think really she had hair and then she shaved it at one point to prove that she is not her hair. So I feel like with her, I feel like there is definitely this level of, you ever see somebody they're just regal? Like their aura is just regal. Like just listening to her speak in this series, I feel like she was very, very important because whenever we think of natural hair, we don't think of professionalism. We don't think of excellence. We don't think of main character. Main character as in like, you're like, you're not a secretary, you're not a help, you are the main stage. So I feel like with Miss Presley, I truly feel like she has this way of speaking and that she like, the fact that you can sit there and see a representative sworn in, you know, especially the first of, I want to say her kind, you know, I don't like using that word. I would say the first to show black excellence at the moment, you know? So I feel like for certain, she was a really good addition to the show. I like the fact that she didn't have any hair because I know it's called the hair tails, but I mean, you shaving your head is someone like, like she said, she said someone who's about to shave, a woman who's about to shave her head is about to change her entire life. And I feel like at one point, every woman, especially every black woman needs to shave her hair because there's just such this negative connotation of short hair on black women seen as a failure when there's such thing as a haircut. Everybody else can have a haircut, but ours is a mistake. You know, you all have that long standing joke like, oh, I used to have long hair, but my mom put that perm in my head or something, blah, blah, when I was six. There is that long standing joke. So I, I truly feel like to see someone on a big grander stage like that and to have her have no hair, or any type of hair like it's it's really it's really just awe inspiring um we're gonna go into our next person chica or chica i feel like i'm saying her name incorrectly but um she's an artist that really she's an artist that i never really heard of um i believe she's been here for a while it's not like she just woke up one day and just was like an overnight sens sensation she was here for she has been here for a minute you know showing her different styles um, she made a good point. One of the points that I like that she made a good point was the addiction to length. You know, that's like um, rolling over from Miss Presley earlier. Um, there is this obsession with length, you know, like there is, you know, black girl long and then there's like, you know, other demographics long. So back in the day, um, let me paint the picture for you. Uh, when we had the relaxers, like anything beyond your shoulders, like I still remember when, it was just quiet. Damn girl, you got some long hair. Mind you, I'm looking, I'm just like, my hair is 11 inches long. Like, why is this happening? But if anything, we're celebrating, if anything for themselves, like they were celebrating, oh my God, your hair is so strong and take damage. You go girl. Like, I was, I was like, you go girl, your hair can take damage. Like, you go girl. Um, but yeah, I really feel like there is this addiction to length because even with, you know, I even I even fell for it too because I still remember when I had a first transition over and I'll like one day I'll do like a whole perm series. Um coming soon probably. Um I remember when I had first got a relaxa, I was so I mean transition from relaxa, I was so scared because I was like, I know I have to cut this. Cause my hair is very stubborn. It was it's not gonna exist, it's not gonna serve two people. You know, it's either you do perm or you do natural. Like my hair was not going to do this. I know my hair, my hair doesn't play that. She was like, either you do this, it's, you can get with this, or you can get with that. 
and I was just like, I don't want to get with neither. <laughs> so I ended up just cutting it all off and having a little baby fro. But it was really hard because like there's just such this negative connotation to oh um mal not not malnourished, but like mal mannered, like someone who has no money, someone who is like unworthy of certain respects because you have all head scatter rack and got no head in the back showing how old i am but it's just there was just such a negative connotation of having short hair because even with like even if your hair was like shoulder length there's like oh well that's the black girl length like there was just such a negative conversation that we were really addicted to having long hair and then she also made a good point about the dark and lovely commercials like let me tell you a little secret which i did a little video about that earlier that ain't their hair <laughs> they're wearing a wig they're wearing a wig the secret is out look behind the green curtain they're wearing a wig like that was i can say that was like one of the most funniest things to me was the fact that like people don't realize like they're wearing wigs baby they're wearing wigs they're wearing wigs you gotta say it one well, say it together to me they're wearing wigs okay so to sit there and know that we're over here crying in the corner like, oh my god my hair's not doing that my hair's not doing that because I would definitely say for sure hair comparison is one of the leads. I feel like hair 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 comparison is one of the leads to depression. I really feel like there is I have like a list of like syndromes that are associated with natural hair that I myself have made up and diagnosed with no with no background or research, but it's just like certain things like, you know, tight scarf syndrome, headaches from that. I put that on there too, but I fully feel like there is such thing as like comparative depression. There's, there's comparative depression, which you know, um, with social media, that's on the rise, where you're going there and you're seeing other women, and you're just like, okay, if I use this hair, like I was so convinced that the the hair videos were real that I think I remember I was like, okay, well, if I wash my hair with this, my hair is gonna look the same. It did not. If anything, it dried it out because dark and lovely was really never. We can't say that. Okay. All right, but I just wanted to make sure that people know, like with certain hair products, they were never meant for our coils. Like they're very harmful to our coils, so um, allegedly. And I feel like there was this pressure, like you see these commercials, these commercials that like, we couldn't avoid commercials like we can now, but we had to watch. What we watch is what we emulated. So I really feel like Sheikah did a really good job of pressing on that. And so I'm gonna go over to Marseille Martin. You know, I love me some Marseille Martin. And I keep forgetting she's an adult because I watched her grow up, but she's so adorable. I respect that she's a grown woman, but her dimples, I'm sorry. I can't get over them. They're so cute. <laughs> They're so cute. Um, but she definitely was a person that I can say grew up on TV and so did her hair. So I remember she was saying there was one time when she was on set when she had to get her hair pressed and it was like a simple hairstyle, but it ended up like ruining her hair. So she started getting protective of who did her hair. I also did um, a good point of, I, I really like she did a good, I really feel like she did a really good job of showing like what it felt like to be in the industry with natural hair or just black hair in general, which I wanna do a video about that as well. But it's very hard to show up on set and have no one you look left, you look right, and everybody's disappointment is in sight, okay? Disappointment is in sight. You look left, you look right, it ain't right, okay? Because to go on set and know no one can handle your hair, I get exactly what Marseille was saying because like, you get protected of your hair. Like, The only people who have touched my hair is my mom, me, and God. That's it. Like, that's the only people. That's the only people who touch my hair at this point because I don't, I don't trust anyone. Like between jealousy, but it's not even jealousy. I can know it jealousy if you're professional. There's a lot of hairstyles that are not professional. The ones who are unprofessional versus the ones who are, it's it's like, it's not even comparative. There's a discrepancy of talent, licenses, all of this stuff of just truly caring about the person. I feel like I haven't seen that. I only trust certain people to straighten my hair anyway. So I really feel like there was that aspect, but she really did a good job of that. And like the final episode was for, Chloe Bailey, Miss Locks, honestly, icon. Like, I know she's young, but an icon. Her hair is an icon, she's an icon. I feel like she, yes, you know, she has big shoes to fill and people keep comparing her compared to Beyonce, but to sit there and see something like, if you notice, I've never called Locks dreads, there's nothing dreadful about them. But I like the fact that she's coming in, cause like my biggest fear was that I was waiting for, I was waiting for the other shoe to drop. I was like, okay, well, she's mainstream with 
She's mainstream with workers, so I know they're gonna make her take her comb her locks out. But she still has them, and she's showing that locks are locks are versatile. Locks are sexy. Locks are classy. Locks are here. They're here. They're here to stay. And I really feel like she did a really good job of just showing that they're they're you know her and her sister, of course, Miss um, Chloe and Holly Bailey. Um, I just. I just really, I just, I hope it's Holly because I want to make sure I'm not mispronouncing it wrong. I'm so sorry. I'm old. Forgive my oldness. But I really feel like to see, like, I, I couldn't imagine as a child seeing someone with locks who is a main, who's on the main stage. Like, it's always someone, like, even with, you know, Miss Lauren Hill, which a lot of people said, oh, well, Lauren Hill was on the stage. She was like, I know, but Lauren Hill had braids too but she had her hair pressed at one point too. So it was kind of like, yeah, but like to sit there in our generation and see somebody, cause like whenever they go mainstream, I was like, up oh, here we go. They about to go, go blonde and straighten every single time. Am I wrong? I'll wait, I'll wait. Um, but definitely for sure. She also um, enlightened us as well that she got a lot of pushback. A lot of people were saying, you're not gonna get this role. You're not gonna get this job if you don't get rid of your locks. And this and other. I was like, get rid of, get rid of is to remove something that's unpleasant. Get rid of is to remove something for your benefit. Her removing her locks would have gotten her more jobs, but it would have pushed her, like it would have pushed her self-confidence years back. Like she's had these locks forever. Like I remember when they were baby locks, so cute. Um, they're grown women, but so adorable. But I remember there were baby locks, like to sit there and have um, someone come in and be like, hey, we want you to remove these locks. It's just kind of like, this is me. This is part of me. If you can't, the, the locks, everything, if that's true, I'm out of here. Cause it's just like, it's part of the package. It's part of the package. It all included. It's like if, um, sorry, that's like when, so when I get more mainstream, there's like, hey, Claire, um, we need you to wear makeup in every episode. Absolutely not. I keep telling y'all, wearing makeup every day will kill your skin. You are gonna, you're gonna get to 32 and wish your skin looked this good. And this is not me a bragging thing. I'm literally telling you because of the fact that I care. It's not a judgment thing, but I know some people who will sit there and be like, oh, I gotta wear makeup every day. I'll say, absolutely not. If you wear makeup every day, your skin will deteriorate. You're not allowing it to breathe. I wear makeup for major episodes and tutorials and I move about my business. So it's like once a week and that's it. Okay, um, but it's just the fact that like, it's part of it. Like, I'm not gonna change myself. I'm still gonna be goofy, still gonna make the jokey jokes, even when they're inappropriate. I'll make sure to make more of those. Um, I'm still gonna make the jokey jokes. It's part of me, it's Claire hair. Claire hair is me, Claire hair is humor. Okay, and I, like I'm here to make y'all laugh. So it's just, I really feel like there was, I really feel like there was this need for her to have an assurance sense of self, especially so young. Cause like I said, this is a work in progress. Like I just got here. So for her to still keep that that um, confidence, I definitely like that. So we're gonna go into my review of the overall series. I give the overall series a three out of five. Three out of five stars. I give the overall series a three out of five stars. I like that it was produced by people who are black. <laughs> I want to make sure. I want to make sure I put that on there, but. I like that it was produced by people who are black because what kills me is that when they do a show and it's just like, when was the last time you deep condition? You haven't deep conditioned before. Please stop. <laughs> I ain't gonna make a, I ain't gonna make a show about people who don't look like you. How that work? Um, but I like that it was produced by black people. Um, the only thing about it is that the reception is that y'all ain't watch it. All right. Now I'm not here to pull out numbers. But y'all yeah, didn't watch the series, y'all yeah, didn't hype it up. I feel like only a select few content creators even talked about it, all three of us. Um, I feel like it was a waste of time because what is the point of making centered shows for that's catered to y'all, to inspire y'all? And y'all not watching it, but you will sit there and go watch and support somebody else's. Like, this is what I'm talking about when I say I don't understand it. But it's cool. We still got one more month in a year. You still got time to make up to me. <laughs> make it up to me. Um, I like the guests. Of course, you know, um, Issa Rae, I can definitely say one of the high points was that the fact that it had Issa Rae on there. Issa Rae is a... <sighs> I'm sorry. Give me one second. She is a natural hair icon. Iconic. Like, a natural hair, like, full-on, like, full-on, like, give her her flowers 
rooting for everybody black. Give her her flowers. She is a natural hair icon. I feel like Easter Ray being on the show was so pivotal. Like she's a natural icon. I like that they had Oprah Winfrey on there, but that was a given. It's Oprah show sponsored, um, so that was given. But it was nice to sit there and see like other artists on there, and also have the youth. So you have that different generational. Because I believe Easter Ray is a millennial like me, and then uh, Marseille and Chloe are Gen Z. So it was nice to have different, you know, different generational views. Um, the only people who I feel like they were missing, I feel like they were missing um, Tiana. I want to make sure I'm saying her name correctly. Um, Lupita Nyong'o. Um, Zazzy Beats is another one. Like, I have this thing where if you notice, this is your homework today. Um, Zazzy, don't play about her natural hair. Every, every movie or artwork she's ever, or artwork or, you know, theatrical piece, She's always rocking her natural hair every single time. She don't care. I, I, I feel like there's like a sub clause, the Zazzy B, the ZB clause. The Al shall not straighten her now. She wore, she wore a wig and bullet train, but I've never seen her with straight hair. I literally looked it up and I couldn't find it. She only wears natural hair, but I um, wish would have caught Lupita Nyong'o on there, but I know she's very busy, but everybody who they brought on there, I really liked everybody who they brought on, but I definitely want you guys to check out Hair Tales. It's definitely a, it's an easy watch. Um, they kind of break it up to where they're just not lecturing at you all day. So it's an easy watch. I really hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving. Um, this is day one of Leftovers. You only got two more days till I start judging you. But don't forget to subscribe, share. It's Claire here. Bye.